Say that again. <laughs> um, so here is our manifold system. Here is our distribution and pumping system for our PEX tubing. And um, this was, again, from the guys at Blue Ridge who gave us a real good price and were very nice. And um, the other people were kind of weird about when you would ask them about planter putting this tubing in planter boxes. They didn't really know much about it and they sure as hell weren't going to commit to it. I got so mad with the guy on the phone one time that he was he was like a typical engineer guy saying, well, I don't know that, I don't know this, I haven't done that, I don't know what that means, I don't know how that would work. And I finally got so pissed off at the guy that I actually asked him, have you ever jumped out of a hundred story building before? And I'm like, do you think you know what would happen if you jumped out of a hundred story building? That's how frustrated I got with the guy and his non-committal, non resourceful, nothing he learned throughout the day could he could apply in any abstract way. Anyway, so this is our system. So it starts off here where we come out of our main water system into a ball valve, of course. And then this is those little um, shark bite connectors. And then this is our back feed preventer. And then this is a, um, what this does is this regulates pressure going in and this is also a um, pop-off valve of sorts, much like this is. Okay, so then we come into the hot side of the tank. We both, this is a T, so this comes out. We go through here, down into our, this is our air separator, and this is our expansion tank. That The expansion tank is basically just a, um, an area in there with a rubber, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a, it's a rubber membrane that allows the system to expand with hot water and contract with cold water and not expand or contract the pipes or make the pecs go through any sort of undue stress and strain. It all happens in there. So then we come out of here through our air scrubber through our expansion tank into our mixing valve. This is the cold return. Then we come out of here and we can double check our mixing temperature because we're incredibly concerned. By the way, this system's off right now because we don't have the planter box full and we're not growing anything. But uh, we're coming out of here so that we can measure this and we're thinking that we want maybe 60 or 70 or 80 degree water going through this thing at the very, very most. Um, we're not in a hurry. We don't think the dirt's going to lose temperature in a hurry. We're not in a hurry to keep to get it up to temperature. We're hopefully going to keep it where the plants are going to be happy. But we sure as hell don't want 180, which you can run this thing 180 degrees. You sure as hell don't want that by the roots to drive the roots nuts. And the, anyway. So then we go into our pump. And then on the other side of our pump, we have our pressure gauge and our temperature gauge. Then we go into our, uh, these are those Blue Ridge, uh, these are their uh, RH, I think was the name that they called for that, and that's the stuff that they make in-house. It's a really a beautiful thing. It's got a shutoff on it. It's got a burper back here on it. It's got a, a drain, a ball valve drain in the back. And then this is the lines coming out that go into all of the planter boxes. Here is how you adjust them with turning this one way or the other to let more or water, more or less water into each individual line because we did sort of chicken out in a lot of ways. I mean, theoretically, what you would really want to have done, I mean, in a perfect world, is you would want to have this manifold. You would want to run these lines to the center of the greenhouse and from the, right, 20-some feet away from here, and from the center of the greenhouse, you would want to go into this manifold and disperse the water or distribute the water evenly from there. Because if you think about the reality of this, now um, this box theoretically would get the water 37 or 38 feet before that end box over there would get it. Yes, the end box on the other side of the picnic table and the chandelier, which was not my intention, but when your girlfriend wants something, you have to live to fight another day. So, 
Then the PEX tubing comes back out of the box, right? Comes back out and into this manifold, which returns it back into the system. So this is actually, this is being pumped this way, through the lines, through this way, and then it comes back this way. So we have an on-off valve here, and then we have another one of those shark bite things after we have the cold inlet for the mixing valve, right? So that what, that, what we're trying to say here is that we could run the water heater at 100 degrees or something like that, 120 degrees, whatever the hell it's sort of comfortable with, because I don't think you can tell a water heater you want 80 degree water coming out of it. I don't know how they feel about that. But we can have this water mix in with the 100 degree water coming out of here and have our 80 or 90 or whatever the hell we find out works good for us. Um, you're probably wondering, after watching, if you watch two or three of these things by now, you're probably wondering, well, gee whiz, I can't believe he cheaped out and didn't buy a on-demand water heater. And that would be much more efficient, and that would have worked, and that would have been better a lot of ways. The reason why I didn't is um, the one thing that both the Radiac people or Radiant Heat people and the Blue Ridge people agreed on was that those things have a hard time doing this kind of thing. And what is this kind of a thing? This kind of a thing is adding five to seven to 10 degrees of temperature to water. If you look at how those things are rated, they're like um, adds 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 19 point some gallons of water per minute. And that's kind of what they do. That's what they put on their tax return. Well. That wasn't anything at all within the realm of what the heck we wanted to accomplish with the water heater system to drive these. So um, that's why we ended up going with an ordinary, unbelievably inefficient, pilot lighted whole thing here. And I'm hoping that um, the boxes insulate. I hope that the whole thing works. Um, really efficiently. I don't know how much it's going to run. I guess we could talk about that later. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is, um, can we go over here, please, please, please?